Shalom, and welcome to Shorashim, the biblical shop here in Jerusalem. We are trying to go live. I'm not sure we're on live yet, and now we are. Again, welcome. Bit of a rocky start, new computer. Uh, welcome to Shorashim, and hopefully what we're going to try to do today is uh, focus on an issue in the Torah portion. Today is August 26th, the 7th of Elul. And what we want to do is focus on one little piece of the Torah portion that has great meaning, I think, to all of us. We're in a time of great stress. We're in a time of great uncertainty. And we have to be aware that whenever we're put into situations like that, there's a purpose to this all. There's lessons to be learned. There's lessons to be explored. And in fact, failing to do that will inevitably lead to even more crisis and more upheaval. The world over the last long period has devolved into becoming more digitalized, more instant, more plastic existence. We began to drift away from real relationships and a desperation began to, began to determine who our friends are by which people like our Facebook or Twitter posts. We destroyed real long-standing relationships in family and friends uh, due to slogans, political stands, politically correct new thinking. People stop believing in ultimate vision and purpose and have raised banners of simple ideas, simple solutions, and slogans. What I want to do, actually, is I want to focus on I want to focus on something in the Torah portion that I believe will be meaningful. But I have to make it very clear. I'm talking about maybe a controversial issue, especially in the United States and other parts of the world. I'm not aiming this at the haters. I'm not aiming it at the anarchists. I'm not aiming it at the selfish people in the world. I'm not aiming it at the racists or the people that don't care and selfishly only want to think about themselves. This is meant for the majority of mankind, the majority of people who are loving children of God who want to do what is right. So I want to focus back to the Torah portion. There's much to learn from this week's Torah portion. It's Torah portion of Kitete, which is Deuteronomy 21.10 to 25.19. And in the end of the Torah portion, we uh, read the following words. asher asa lecha amalek. Remember what the Amalek nation did to you on the way when you left Egypt. They met you along the way and attacked the weak members of the nation at the back of the pack, and you were exhausted and did not fear God. The lawyer looking. And it will be when God gives you rest from your enemies round the bat and the land that God has given to you as an inheritance, you're mandated to wipe out the memory of Amalek from under the heavens. Do not forget. Deuteronomy 25, 17 to 18. The question to ask is in that verse, you were exhausted and did not fear God. Who did not fear God? So Rashi teaches on the words, the lawyer Elohim did not fear God. He says, he, Amalek, did not fear God. Amalek's whole purpose of attacking you was because he wanted to prove that God was immaterial, powerless to protect you. His battle was against him, which is why we read in the verse that this is a battle that is a battle later on we see in Exodus 17. We see that he calls it the battle against Hashem, a battle against God. The Ketav Sofer understood the word to mean that he was undeterred by the fear of God, even though he knew the nations all around were, were, were amazed at what had happened with the Exodus of Egypt. Rahab, talking to the two spies that Joshua sent, says, we, all the nations have melted out of fear of God. And yet he was not going to be deterred by that. He was going to battle God. 
And Hashem says unto Moshe, write this from memorial in the book, this is Exodus 17, and rehearse it in the years of Joshua, for I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moshe built an altar, and he says, the hand of, upon the throne of Hashem, Hashem will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. It's a battle of God fighting not this people, but what this people represented. Representing a sense of God's not important. God isn't all powerful. In fact, everything in this world is just random. Yet the Mechilta understands the words diff differently. According to his view, the words pointing at the Israelites, is pointing to the Israelites. They were exhausted. They were tired. They were fatigued. And they did not fear God. They did not have that faith in God because they thought themselves to be unworthy. Amalek always appears when the people of Israel become tired, become less sure of themselves, become in, in able, unable to move forward because they feel themselves unworthy. In fact, we read in Exodus 17 from 3 to 8, and the people thirsted there for water, and the people murdered against Moshe. Where have us that brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And the name of the place was called Masan Meriva because of the striving of the children, because they tried Hashem, saying, Is Hashem among us or not? And the next verse, Amalek attacks. He always attacks when we lose faith in our ability to represent God in this world. How was that weirdness displayed? How, how do we know that they lack the strength to go forward? So let's go back to the verse. Remember what the Amalekites did to you on the way when you left Egypt. They met you along the way and attacked the weak members of the nation at the back of the pack, and you were exhausted and did not fear God. Deuteronomy again, 25, 17 to 18. The fact that the Israelites allowed there to be weak stragglers at the back of the pack, to be weak people to be exposed and vulnerable to an easy prey for Amalek, that is the clear indication that they had lost the fear of God. The, 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 their lack of sensitivity to those at the back, the stragglers, the weak. When people lose their sensitivity to each other, lose the power of compassion, they cease to become a vessel of God's ultimate plan. That will be the ultimate test for all of us in this world. Will we allow there to be weak members of the nation at the back of the pack without at least being concerned, without at least trying to understand, without at least trying to reaching out? The focus in the world today is whose side are you on? Rather than how do we bridge those sides? The focus today is look at what those people are saying and doing rather than why are people saying and doing those things? This in no way is meant to condone either side in these conflicts. Decrying injustice by committing other injustices are two sides of the same coin. Injustice and uncontrolled violence are two sides of the same coin and are all pointing to a lack of faith in God and in our ultimate purpose. In order to bring God's purpose back into this world, we need to be his language. Rav Menachem Medel of Taps, I've used this before, asked his children, asked his students, what language does God speak? And one of them said Hebrew, another one said English, another one said all languages. Rav Menachem Medel of Taps said, no, man is the language of God. Meaning, God can express himself by the way we act. If we act compassionate, God will be seen as compassionate. God says, I want to take care of the widows and the orphans. How's he going to do that if we don't step in to do that? So the way, the lesson that should have been learned from all the corona, the COVID-19, the, even the riots was, wait, we need to rethink, we need to regroup, we need to reach out to each other. If we don't learn that, there will be more. But if we do learn that, God's name will be glorified. Thank you all for listening to us. Thank you for joining us. You can join us at www.shorashim.com. You can join us, hopefully, in our continuing study 
of Psalm 27. And God willing, next week, we hope to really refocus on a whole new idea, and that is to take names, break them down into their Hebrew components, into their Hebrew letters, and learn the power, the biblical power that lies in each name. So God willing, we'll be able to do that next week. Thank you again for listening to us. Remember, you can visit us also at the Shorashim Biblical Shop Facebook or the Shorashim Shop Facebook. There, we're constantly trying to put in new products because actually your support, should you decide, only if you decide that there's something you like, that helps us continue what we're doing. So thank you for being supportive, and you have been, and thank you for being helpful, and thank you for listening. Until the next time, Lidrot and Lanatov, have a great night. And to be honest, new computer, and I have no idea how to end this. Ah, found it, where it says end live video. So that's what we are going to do. Need